In this video, we're going to take a look at rational functions by comparing them to the base function. So we're going to take a look at the characteristics and the graphs. So our base function, we would say, is f of x equals 1 over x, or f of x equals 1 over x squared. Uh, we're going to rewrite the functions algebraically so that they kind of look like one of these two functions, or their base is one of these two functions. And then we're going to use transformations to compare them. So let's take a look at these three functions. So we haven't seen one with the squared yet, so let's uh, venture out to see what this looks like. So we have f of x equals 1 over x squared. So we're going to call that our base function. Now if we take a look at g of x, it looks like we have negative 3 times our base function. So we have negative 3 over x plus 5, all squared. So I can think of this as g of x equals negative 3, and then I'm going to multiply that by 1 over x plus 5, all squared. Now this x plus 5, if I take the x plus 5 and plug it into the x, I would get the x plus 5 all squared in the denominator. So based on this, the g of x is equal to negative 3 times the function f of x, but it's not just f of x, because that would give me negative 3 times 1 over x squared. But I actually want an x plus 5 in the denominator. So it's going to be actually negative 3 times f of x plus 5. So this function notation is stating that I would take the x plus 5 and substitute it into the x in the x squared, and that's how I would get my denominator. Let's take a look at h of x. So h of x has a different kind of denominator. It has a trinomial on the bottom. But if I look a little bit more closely, it's actually a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to factor this. And this will give me x minus 3, all squared, plus 4. So rewriting this in my transformation notation, I can say that this is going to be 5 times f. And this time, instead of plugging in the x plus 5, I'm actually plugging in x minus 3, and I'm substituting that into the x. So this would be x minus 3. I'm not squaring it because the function notation states that I take the x minus 3 and plug it into the f function. And the f function is this one here, and I would replace the x with the x minus 3. And the function is already being squared. I also have to add 4. Okay, So just drawing this really quickly, um, the 1 over x squared graph, if I do a little table of values, I would have 0, and then it's going to be undefined. And then I'm going to choose two numbers on either side. So when I get negative 2, I'm going to get 1 fourth. Negative 1, I get 1. 1, I still get 1. And 2, I still get 1 fourth. So notice that these numbers are symmetrical. So at 0, we have our asymptote. Negative 2, I have a quarter, so it's really small down on the bottom here, <coughs> excuse me, negative 1, I have 1. And same on the other side. Okay, so connecting these four points, I actually get something that looks like this. So when the graph is, or the function is squared in the denominator there, it's always going to be positive. So that is why I only have a graph on the positive side, or above the x-axis. So this is my f of x. All right, g of x, we can see from our transformation, all of the points, our y value is going to be three times bigger, and then we're going to move it over um, also by negative five. So this time, my asymptote is at negative five. Okay, and I also have a reflection, and since it's negative, I, 3, I have a reflection over the x-axis, and then also all my points are going to be 3 times bigger. So instead of negative 1 and 1, I would have negative 1 and 3. But this is based on this axis this time over here. Okay, So I'm going to draw this upside down, and 
And this will give me a graph that looks like this. And this is my g of x graph. Okay, my last graph is 5 times x minus 3 and then plus 4. So that means that my graph has moved over 3 to the right and 4 up. So 3 to the right, so my asymptotes here, and also at 4. It's no longer the x-axis. Now the difference here this time is I have the 5 times. So my graph, my blue one, is now going to be 5 times stretched. So using my new green as my axes, then I would say that instead of negative 1, 1, I could say it's going to be negative 1 and 5. And then 1 will also be 5. So using here, I would go negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plot a point here, and same thing here. And then 1 fourth will now be 5 fourths. So just a little bit above the 1. Oops. Hey, sorry about that. And so we're going to graph a point here and a graph a point here. Oh, and shouldn't be touching the asymptote, so I'm going to redraw that. And there is my green graph, which is h of x. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the features of these three graphs. And I can see that the non-permissible value, so based on my denominator, the first one would be the non-permissible value is equal to 0. And the second one, my non-permissible value is negative 5. Because if I have negative 5 in the denominator, I would get 0 in the denominator. Now h of x, I'm not going to go from here, but if I look at what I wrote from before above, here's my h of x. It's easier to see here. I can see that x equals 3 is my non-permissible value. Okay, so here the second characteristic is what is the behavior near the non-permissible value? So when I talk about the behavior, we're asking what's the y value? What's happened to the y value as we get closer to these three values here? So for the blue one, um, as we approach 0, I can see that so as x approaches 0, my y value becomes very large. In the second one, as we approach negative 5, so as x approaches negative 5, I can see this time, again, the y becomes very large. Now, I know that it's upside down and it's actually going to negative values, but I put the absolute y to state that that absolute would be getting very large. Um, and the last one, as x approaches 3, again y becomes very large. Now we, we can say for the second one too, if you wanted to omit the absolute value signs, we can say that y becomes very, very small or very, very negative. Um, the end behavior is asking what again, what's the y value approaching as the graph approaches positive or negative infinity. So as the x becomes very large, and that could, when it's, because I'm having the absolute, that means whether it becomes very large negatively or very large positively, y approaches zero. Oops. Let me write this again. So as y, x becomes very large, y approaches 0. And that's the same thing for the red graph, or the graph that is g of x. As the absolute value of x becomes very large, y approaches 0. Now the last one, as x approaches or becomes very large, This time it doesn't approach zero, but I can see that it's approaching my asymptote, which is four. So y approaches four.
Okay, my next one is my domain and range, which I can't see here. So I'm going to have to move this up and down a little bit. So the domain of my blue graph, x can be all real numbers, such that it can't be zero though, but it can be all the other real numbers. And let's do the range together as well. So the range of the blue graph, we can see that's going to be y, such that y is greater than zero, but not equal to zero because remember that's where the asymptote is. Okay, taking a look at the red graph, uh, we can see that this time the domain um, it can't equal five, but it can be all the other real numbers. And then this time the domain, because the graph is upside down, we're going to say that y is less than zero and it's all the real numbers. Okay, finally the green one, which we have up here, um, it's all the x values, but it can't equal three. And then the y values is that it has to be this time above my asymptote, which is actually at four. So we're gonna say that y, such that y is greater than four, but all the other real numbers. Okay, now I actually don't really need to look at the graph because now that I have my domain and range, I can tell you the equation of the vertical and the horizontal asymptote just by looking at uh, my domain and range. And actually, I just noticed something. Uh, my domain here for this g of x graph, it should be negative five and I wrote positive five. So that should be a negative here. So let me squeeze that in. Okay. All right. So uh, the equation of my vertical asymptote for the blue graph is going to be x equals zero. The horizontal asymptote will also be zero. So y equals zero. So that's my x and my y axis. Uh, for the second graph, the red one, the equation of the vertical asymptote, notice that it was at negative five. And when you see the domain, that x can't equal five, negative five. So we're going to say that x equals negative five. Because the graph hasn't moved down, the horizontal asymptote is still at y equals zero. And the last graph, h of x, we see the domain x cannot equal three, so that is where the equation of the asymptote is, x equals three. And the graph this time did move up four, so our asymptote now is y is equal to four.